today we're going to look at a pretty gnarly integral. So we've got the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth times the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. And we're going to start with a fairly complicated substitution, but in order to motivate that substitution, we need to rewrite this thing a little bit. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's take this and we'll rewrite it as, well, the integral from 0 to 1 will have x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth. And then we'll take this square root of 1 minus x to the fourth and kind of do the obvious thing, which is factor this as the difference of squares, keeping in mind that x to the fourth is x squared squared. So we've got 1 minus x squared times 1 plus x squared. Okay, so like I said, that's our first step. And then the next step is to include a square root in the numerator like we have a square root in the denominator. And that square root in the numerator will be the square root of 1 plus x squared. But in order to have that square root of 1 plus x squared in the numerator, that means we also need to multiply the denominator by the square root of 1 plus x squared. So that's going to change the denominator a little bit. Notice we can bring this square root of 1 plus x squared inside, and that will turn this 1 plus x squared to 1 plus x squared squared. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase that because we no longer need it. Notice that encoded in this is the fact that we've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the square root of one plus x squared. Okay, so now let's rewrite this a little bit. So we'll still have the integral from zero to one, and now I'm gonna take this and write it as the square root of one plus x squared over one minus x squared. So that comes from this one plus x squared, this one minus x squared. And then I'll have x squared in the numerator. I'll have one plus x to the fourth in the numerator. And then I'll also have one plus x squared in the denominator. So that leaves me x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth, 1 plus x squared, and then I have my dx component. So that's from taking this 1 plus x squared out of the square root. Okay, and from here we're going to multiply by, by a version of 1 in order to enable our substitution. And that version of 1 will be 4x over x squared minus 1 squared, and then it's reciprocal. Okay, so let's write that down. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to copy all of that as is. And then we'll have x squared minus 1 squared over 4x times 4x over x squared minus 1 squared dx. So that's the version of 1 that I multiplied by. And you might say, well, how would we ever come up with this version of 1? Well, it turns out that if you let u be the inside of the square root, then du is exactly what's going on over here. And so that motivates this multiplication by this fancy version of 1. So let's write that substitution over here. So if we have u equals, like I said, 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x squared, then by taking derivatives we get du equals 4x over x squared minus 1 squared dx. I'll let you check that calculation, that's just from taking derivatives. So that means this term right here is the square root of u, and then this term way out here is our du term. We're obviously also gonna have to change our bounds of integration, but we'll get to that. Another thing that we need to do is take care of all of the rest of these terms right here. So notice we've got, well, an x squared over x, those can simplify. So that's one thing that we can do, but then we've got all of this other stuff that we need to take care of as well. So how can we do that? 
Well, maybe we'll first solve this for x, and that'll allow us to rewrite all of this in terms of u. So solving for x, we'll like multiply both sides by one minus x squared. That'll leave us with u minus ux squared equals one plus x squared. And then collecting all of our x terms on one side of the equation, we'll have u minus one equals x squared times u plus one, which tells us that x equals u minus one over u plus one. And that should be x squared. But then of course, if x squared is this, then x is the square root of this. We'll also need an x squared minus one squared and a one plus x to the fourth and a one plus x squared. So let's work those out. I won't go through all of the details, but we have one minus x squared is in fact two over u plus one. So let's maybe put a little box around that. We're gonna need that. And then one plus x squared is two u over u plus one. Whereas one plus x to the fourth is equal to two times the quantity u squared plus one over u plus one all squared. Okay, so that takes care of all of the rest of our parts there. The last thing to figure out is what's happening to the bounds of integration. So let's notice when x is equal to zero, u is equal to one, because we get one plus zero over one minus zero. So we have u equals one. And then as x approaches one, we see that u approaches positive infinity. That's because we get two in the numerator and we're approaching zero in the denominator from above. Okay, so let's see what we have now. We'll have the integral from one to infinity by how we change the bounds of integration. And then we'll have the square root of u from this first term. And then all of the rest of this up to our du turns into the following object. We'll have u minus one over u plus one times u plus one over two u times u plus one quantity squared over two times u squared plus one. And so that's coming from these two being in the denominator. And then this u minus one over u plus one actually comes from this x squared term. So let's leave that x squared and this x term in as well. And then we'll have our x squared minus one squared will be the square of this. So that'll leave us with four over u plus one squared. And then we'll have this four x term. Well, I'll take that four and bring it out, leaving us with just x, which is the square root of u minus one over u plus one, but that's in the denominator. So in fact, what we have is the square root of u plus one over u minus one du. Okay, so it seems like perhaps this has just gotten a lot gnarlier than what we started with, but there's quite a bit of simplification that we can do. We can take this four and cancel it with this two times two. Then next up, we can take this u plus one and cancel it with this u plus one. Then finally, this u plus one squared cancels with this u plus one squared. And then this u minus one, which is in a square root, can cancel this u minus one in the numerator by putting it in the square root. And then finally, we can take this u in the denominator and this u in the numerator and cancel them to give us a square root of u in the denominator. And I think that's all the simplification that we can do and we're ready to write down this next form of our integral. So it's the same sort of setup and then we'll have in the numerator one over the square root of u from this term. Then we'll have times the square root of u squared minus one from combining this u minus one and this u plus one, which is both under the radical. And then this u squared plus one in the denominator from there. Okay, so we're left with something like that. And then I'm gonna bring those two square roots together to leave us with the square root of u minus one over u over u squared plus one. That's from bringing this inside of the square root. 
Okay, so let's pick it up at this step and then move on. So on the last board via a crazy substitution and then a lot of simplification, we ended up with our goal integral equal to one quarter the integral from one to infinity, the square root of u minus one over u over u squared plus one. Now what we'll do is multiply this thing by another version of one, and that version of one will be built to simplify this denominator, maybe not all the way, but in a way so that it interacts with the numerator. So I'll multiply by one plus one over u squared, and that has to happen upstairs and downstairs. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all of the details, but this denominator multiplies out in a way that you can complete the square and get something like this. So let's get everything copied over. And then, like I said, the denominator can be written as um, u minus 1 over u quantity squared plus the number four, du. The motivation is there is that we've got the same thing inside of the square as we have in the square root up there. And that motivates a substitution for that integral. And I know we started with the variable x, but I'm gonna reuse the variable x just to make things simple. So my substitution now will be x equals u minus 1 over u. Notice by differentiating, we get dx equals 1 plus 1 over u squared du. Just using the power rule on this term right here. So let's see what that gives us. So this 1 plus 1 over u squared du is our dx term. And then notice here we have a u, and then up here we have a square root of u. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. So when u is equal to 1, we see that x is equal to 1 minus 1 over 1, which is 0. So we get x equals 0. And then as u approaches infinity, x also approaches infinity. And we see that because one over u will approach zero and then obviously u is going to infinity based off this limit right here. So that's pretty nice. Now we have an integral from zero to infinity. So this will be one quarter, the integral from zero up to infinity. We have the square root of x. This should have been an x here and here. And then that is all over x squared plus 4dx. And now we're going to do something called a rationalizing substitution on this integral. So what we'll do is set t equal to the square root of x. Notice that's equivalent to saying that x equals t squared, which means dx is 2t dt. Notice also x squared is t to the fourth and the bounds of integration do not change here. So that leaves us with one quarter, then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity of, so it's gonna be t times 2t dt. So that'll leave us with a t squared in the numerator. And then the two will cancel this one quarter down to one half. Then in the denominator, we have t to the fourth plus four dt. And now we're gonna use a fairly tricky partial fraction decomposition, and it's all based off of this factorization. t to the fourth plus four is equal to t squared plus two t plus two times t squared minus two t plus two. So that means we can write t squared over t to the fourth plus one as something over this first term plus something over this second term. So I won't go through all of the calculation details of that, that's straightforward, albeit a little bit laborious symbolic manipulation, but what we'll end up with is one over eight, and then the integral from zero to infinity of t over t squared minus 2t plus 2 minus t over t squared plus 2t plus 2. 
dt. But now in order to finish this off, we need to complete the square in each of these denominators. So we'll still have an eighth here, then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity, t over t minus one quantity squared plus one. Notice if you multiply this out, this t minus one squared out and add the one to it, we get exactly that denominator. And then likewise, here we'll have t over t plus one quantity squared plus one. But now from here, we wanna make these numerators look more like these denominators. So what I'll do here is subtract one and add one. And here I will add one and subtract one. So plus one minus one. Then we have this dt out here. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's start with this on the next board with these integrals split up a little bit. So notice this naturally splits up as t minus one over this denominator and one over this denominator. So we had a long journey, but we're finally ready to take the antiderivative here. So let's notice via a fairly simple substitution in these first two, where we take, in this case, maybe u to be equal to t minus one quantity squared plus one, we see that du is equal to two times t minus one dt. And then similarly for this over here, we'll get something like a natural log. Then further in this other, in with these other two, we can use inverse tangent antiderivatives. So in the end, we'll have the following object. We'll have one quarter natural log of, so it'll be this t minus one squared plus one, but we can multiply that out to t squared minus two t plus two, and then minus natural log of t squared plus two t plus two. So those are both multiplied by one quarter, and then we'll have an eighth from this eight that's over here of the arctan of t minus one and t plus one. So we'll have arctan of t minus one plus an eighth times the arctan of t plus one. And then we evaluate that from zero to infinity, where we're essentially taking limits on both sides. Okay, so let's see what we finally get. So this is gonna be a quarter. We'll have the natural log of t squared minus two t plus two over t squared plus two t plus two, evaluated from zero to infinity, taking limits as necessary. And then plus one eighth times two times the arctan of infinity. So I'm being a bit sketchy with my notation here, but that's what we get if we plug in t equals infinity, keeping in mind that we're really taking a little limit there. And then minus the arctan of minus one plus the arctan of plus one. And that's from plugging zero into those two bits. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. If we let t approach infinity, this interior rational function approaches one. That's because we've got an equal degree in the numerator and the denominator and the coefficients are both one. Natural log of one is zero. If we plug in zero, the numerator and the denominator both collapse to two. So we also get a one inside the natural log that also gives us zero. So this whole thing here gives us zero. Then furthermore, the inverse tangent function is an odd function. So that means inverse tangent of minus one plus the inverse tangent of one is zero. So both of those cancel to zero, leaving us with one over eight times two times the arctan of infinity. Well, really we're talking about the limit as the argument of the inverse tangent approaches infinity. But that's exactly equal to pi over two. So we've got one over eight times two times pi over two so in the end, we get pi over eight. And that's our final value for this integral. And that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.